There is a pretty fine line between having a cool, fun, and unique looking website and having a website that's really confusing, hard to understand, and frankly, hard to use. Web design tools and apps out there have made it so much easier to add all these crazy fun features to your website. And it's really important to find the right balance of having a website that's uniquely you, that's uniquely your brand, and a website that's still really user-friendly and is going to make it simple for your ideal clients to navigate, figure out what you offer, and figure out whether or not they're going to buy from you. Today, I thought it would be fun to look at some ways that you can make your website more unique and visually interesting. And on the flip side of that, we're gonna look at some things that you wanna be careful of if you want to implement some of these fun and interesting things. So I'll show you a few cool things to try on your website, and then I'll talk about some of the pitfalls you want to avoid when implementing those things. Hi, I'm Galen, I'm a web designer, and I love building super personal websites that help your ideal clients connect with you, your message, and your brand. If you need help with your website, whether it's just a refresh or an entire rebuild, I'll include the link to my contact form in the description below so you can get in touch. The first way to spice up your website a little bit is to not be afraid of color. We're coming out of this era of some really minimalist, beautiful sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Editorial, editorial style websites. And while those are great and that trend isn't necessarily going anywhere, we're seeing a lot more sites that play with color, whether it's fun, vintage, retro styles, or just different styles that help the brand stand out in a crowded area. One of my favorite resources for finding the right color palette for your brand is called Coolers. I'll include the link below, but it's basically a color palette generator that helps you find colors and find colors that look good together. So you can create an entire color palette for your brand from scratch or using a few base colors to start. I also love using Pinterest to find color palette ideas. They have so many different versions on there. You can search some of your main brand keywords or brand adjectives and search color palettes that are going to match the vibe that you want your brand to give off. Now, what do you need to look out for when choosing colors so that you don't break any user experience rules? That is going to be checking the contrast of your colors so that you know that the text and the background are different enough that your users aren't going to have trouble reading the text on your website. This is especially important for any visually impaired users. You want to make sure that that contrast is high enough that they're not gonna have any issues consuming your content. The same site I mentioned earlier, Coolers, also has a color contrast checker where you can put in two different hex codes and check the contrast between the two to always make sure that your text is going to stand out from the background as much as possible. Next up, we have choosing a really unique or interesting font. I have a video about a bunch of custom fonts you can use for inspiration. I will link that here but choosing a custom font can really just give your website this unique feel and make it so that nobody else in your industry is going to have the same look and feel as you do. We have a guest, a guest expert. We can just see her tail wagging just out of frame. That's what I get for recording videos around dinner time. I love a site like Creative Market for finding fonts. You can also try out something like Etsy to find some creative and unique fonts, but Whatever font you choose, make sure it is easy to read. This is the pitfall I see so many people fall into. When you're choosing a font, you wanna ask yourself, how are you going to be using this font? Does it look good, uppercase or lowercase? Does it look good at larger sizes and smaller sizes? Think about its use cases and make sure that it's gonna be easy to read and that it's going to transition well from desktop to mobile devices. Also, this is a big one too, don't forget to buy the proper font licenses. A desktop license typically lets you use a font in different design software for print. That could be things like printing business cards or printing a flyer, whereas you may need a web license to use that font on your website. And you may even need another license to be able to use that font on social media. Every font creator has their own licensing system. So just make sure that you understand 
what you're buying and how many different licenses you need based on the ways you're gonna be using that font. Next up, we have incorporating different custom graphics or icons into your site. You can either draw these yourself in something like Procreate. I've been doing this a lot lately. I have my iPad, I will draw some interesting shapes or different things on my iPad in the app Procreate, bring it over to my Mac. I will use Image Trace and Illustrator to create a vector or an SVG file and then use that on my website. If you want a tutorial about that, I can create one for you. Just let me know in the comments if you want to see how that process works. So you can create them yourself in something like Procreate or you can use uh, a marketplace like Creative Market or again Etsy or even like the Noun Project which has thousands of unique icons that you can use on your site just to make things really stand out. So for example, maybe instead of regular bullet points, you wanna have custom bullet points on your site or instead of just having a plain background, you wanna incorporate some sort of textured pattern in that background that you've created yourself or that you found on something like Creative Market. Again, I'm gonna be linking all these resources in the description below for you. Next up on my list is incorporating GIFs or movement into your website in some capacity. So this could be a number of different things. You could be creating a GIF of your headshot. This is a really fun one. So if you've got a photo of yourself, you can actually turn that into a GIF. If you've got a few photos, you can string them together to just put some movement back into your site. This could be things like different animations that you use in your site. A lot of web design platforms have some animations built in, which makes it really easy. But again, make sure you are not going over the top with this. Too many GIFs can really slow down your site or make it overwhelming too much animation can make it difficult to consume the content. So find the right balance between having some movement on your site and having too much movement on your site that it slows your site down or makes it unusable. One of my favorite ways to make your site a little bit more interesting is to have a brand photo shoot. Get your own branded photos rather than using stock photos. You may have already done this, which good for you. I love seeing when my clients do this. Almost all of my clients at this point come to me with some amount of brand photos already taken. I love it if I can connect with them before they actually work with their photographer because I'll recommend certain things. Like for example, change your outfits. Change your outfits more than you think you should because you're going to find that using these photos again and again on your site gets a little bit awkward if you're in that same white collared shirt for three of the six photos and then one other type of shirt for the other three photos. Change your outfit, change your locations, even if it's just walking across a room or going uh, out in the street versus inside a coffee shop for photos, change it up so that way it feels like you had five different photo shoots instead of just one. The other thing when it comes to brand photo shoots and specifically how to use brand photos for your website, try to have your photographer step back and get some wide angle shots because Detail shots or wide angle shots work really well as background images. Typically on desktop, at least, your background images are going to be horizontal. And most people get a lot of close ups, a lot of headshots, but they don't get as many further away shots that we can use as background images. So try to get some great section background images with your photographer when you are working on your brand photos. Next, we have adding a chat widget to your site. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. Again, I'll include some links to my favorite chat services in the comments below so you can check them out for yourself. But I love having a chat uh, widget on your site that pops up on certain pages and preemptively asks questions to your website visitors. They could ask something like, hey, I saw you were looking at my website services. Do you have any specific questions I can answer for you? Or tell me a little bit about your business. There's a lot of great ways that you can target people depending on what page they're on and have a little pop-up come out of the corner of your website, out of that chat widget and ask them a helpful question to start that conversation. I don't recommend overdoing this or having it on every single page of your site, but I find that it helps to build connection and it helps to get people talking, get people communicating with you that might otherwise have just been browsing and not reached out. There's also quite a few services now that actually do video chat widgets, which is neat. I had this on my site for a while where it was actually like my face recording a video. I was waving and welcoming people to my website and answering frequently asked questions. 
on my site as a video in a chat box. They could respond by typing back, they could respond by sending an audio message or a video message to me, but it just really helped to put a face to the brand and help to create, again, that one-on-one -on -one connection with people who are visiting your site. I am all about creating unique and personalized websites, embracing what makes your brand human, what makes your brand connect with people, and finding ways to incorporate those unique little elements into your site. But at the end of the day, usability comes first. Clarity is always gonna be better than cleverness, and it's important to kind of find the balance between the two. If fun, bright pops of color represents your brand really well and reflects the personality of your team, great, embrace that in your website. If your brand is a little bit more clean and modern and not as lively, for example, maybe you gotta go with something that's a little bit more sleek and clean and minimalist. You also want to consider how you're showing up across the internet as a whole. You want your website to match your business cards, to match your social media profile photos and your grid on Instagram, right? You want everything to feel like it's connected so that when somebody gets on a Zoom call with you or meets you in person, they know exactly what to expect from your business. Did you find this video helpful? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to share your own ideas for how you plan to make your website a little bit more unique. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.